Hey everyone, hopefully you're having a good day. My name's Andy, my channel's Finding Value. Today we're gonna to do our daily technical analysis update of commodities. Uh, we're gonna work our way through dollar yields, precious metals, and commodities and ETFs that I follow. I'll be interjecting my financial opinions, and if you guys need any help with anything, definitely check out finding-value.com. Got a lot of information on there that can help guide you uh, on making better financial decisions. So. Let's dive in, take a look at what's going on. We've got the DXY continuing to strengthen uh, up a little bit today. Uh, that is basically be being paired with higher yields. Higher yields, uh, higher dollar, it seems like. Lower yields, lower dollar. Looking at the two-year yield, up 1.36%, looking quite strong in the short term. Look at that. Is this due to the debt ceiling? I don't know. Um, it's also strengthening oil. <clears throat> Generally speaking, interest rates and oil move together. Same with housing, <laughs> to some extent. We back out a little bit. We can see we've been moving up here. You can see this strong last week here, or last month. Is this a... Um, shoulder head shoulder that's developing i don't know we'll find out here soon if we have any reversal candlesticks uh coming up <clears throat> if it is then certain assets will behave differently when this goes up it's a tailwind for oil and gas and energy in general if this were to rotate and go down gold and silver are going to crush it <clears throat> so that's based off of the two-year bond yields. And we're talking about overall general sent sentiment. So remember, this was a big turn heading lower uh, where gold and silver took off. The 10-year yield up 0.7%. So the two-year was up 1.4. The 10-year is up 0.7. The 30-year is up 0.5. You can see the inversion of the yield curve. Uh, so we're higher here in the 10-year. Still looks good to go higher. Same with the 30 year going up. So the whole yield, the whole yield curve is going up and it's inverting. So that, that's what we're seeing in the markets. TYX, TNX is also indicating that we are inverting. That's why it's going down. That is a headwind for precious metals in the short term. And it's a tailwind for other investments like oil uh, and maybe even uranium. <clears throat> Bond prices continue lower. It looks like we could potentially crap out a lower um, pullback in bonds. And again, is this due to the debt, debt ceiling stuff, or is this genuine being driven by market fundamentals in the short term? I don't know. We'll find out. Uh, gold slightly lower by $5. Um, not really much to worry about here. I still think this looks good to go higher or sideways and base a little bit, uh, which is above support. So we're above support and everything looks good. We could pull back a little bit, even to the uh, low 1900s, uh, and still be okay. Silver down a little bit, down 0.9%. Uh, it's right on support. Uh, we'll see if that support level holds, but it's right on top of it. Platinum up a buck fifty. not really much to write home about. Uh, that is also above support. So we're above support. We are consolidating for all three metals. XAU to gold ratio is flat today. Uh, still looks like we could head a little bit lower to sideways, somewhere in that range. Uh, and we have not broken out of that big long-term downtrend line yet. The line for happiness is what I call it. CRB index. Uh, slightly lower today, uh, just moving sideways. That does look like we could continue higher. Uh, we've got buying pressure. Well, mm, we'll see where this goes because we did lead in here from the top side down. We do have some sort of pennant flag formation, which is inverted. It could head lower. Uh, unfortunately, though, or I should say fortunately, we've got this pattern here where it's buying pressure and selling pressure that looks like it wants to go higher in the short, short term. So conflicting data on um, different timeframes. 
I would look at this as still being bullish. Uh, CRV to S&P 500, slightly lower. We're right at that 0.618 Fib retracement, retracement level, which is generally the location that things bottom at. There's the corner there, so I'm I'm, gonna, I'm just going to shrink it up like that so it's easier to see. I don't have to back out so much. So 0.618 is right where we're at. <clears throat> uh, GDX down 0.9% and just basically moving sideways. It still looks like we could still pull back in the short term, and it's going to be highly related, highly relevant is the yields. If yields continue higher, we're going to see this continue lower. <clears throat> GDX, same thing, right on support. It's pulled back a little bit. Same with SILJ, pulling back a little bit. And that will conti continue if we see yields continue higher. Crude oil ending up 0.6%. This actually looks fantastic to move higher. We've got large green army coming in, small selling pressure right this looks perfect to go higher is what I see. So I'm expecting it to move on up. Natural gas down today. It is still basing out here. Um, still looks all right. I don't think we're going to go much lower. It looks like we're just basing. XOP, yeah, you know me, up today. Uh, I don't like seeing these little wicks at the top. That usually means there's a little bit of selling pressure in there. But overall, still looks good to go higher. We'll see if we can break out of that downtrend line here uh, oih is breaking out of its downtrend line uh looking quite strong today i wish it had finished even stronger into closing so we could continue tomorrow but uh, up 1.8 still looking good sprout physical uranium trust up 0.61 percent we still need to break out of this downtrend line we're close and it looks like it's trying to uh to do that URNM up 2.7%. <laughs> Bullish engulfing. The green army is showing up. This looks good to go higher. So let's see if we can break out of this resistance downtrend line. Get out of here and break on up. <clears throat> but it's looking very good. It's looking bullish. URNJ is also looking bullish with 3.8% uh, up day to day. Breaking through that resistance level. Tan up 1.75, still kind of in the tip here, <laughs> just consolidating as long as it can, it looks like. COPX down, this does look like we could see further downside in COPX. To the downside, we've got stronger selling pressure in this weak little bu buying bounce. <clears throat> so that generally, you bounce, small little bounce, you fall down, bounce, it's a stair step lower. You can see it here. Small little bounce, stair step lower. Lithium up, uh, still inside the pattern though, and we'll see if that breaks. We do have pretty weak buying pressure over the past week. REMX down a little bit, and that is still also in its consolidation pattern, but it looks good. We got a nice good bullish engulfing there. That generally indicates that we want to break higher. We're also on support. S&P 500 sideways. Zooming in, we're right on resistance. We'll see if we can break that. NASDAQ up 0.5%. <clears throat> that, that, like that looks ready to go to the upside. That actually looks pretty dang good. Uh, emerging markets up 0.82%. That also looks... More positive than what we've seen in the past. So that's looking a little bit better. Uh, still moving sideways, though, in the overall longer term view. XHB down 1%. Uh, this is a bearish engulfing here. So that does look like we could head lower in the short term. Uh, Moo, I, I still think this is going to head lower back to this level down there. Then that's the good buying opportunity. Copper down 1.37%. Uh, this is. Copper futures, that looks like it could potentially head lower. <clears throat> Dr. Copper is not looking too healthy. So we could see uh, economic weakness is what this is portraying. Iron ore 
holding together, still above this uh, falling wedge, still looks good to go higher. Nickel up 1.6%. It's just moving sideways for the most part. But I would still say there is potential more downside um, based off of the charts. Aluminum moving sideways today, down 0.9%. But we've got that lead-in pattern that could, vent, could potentially work its way on up uh, based off the fractal that I've seen in other fractals. That's what the blue line is. Uh, BDI uh, lower today. Again, I think we are going to grind higher after this pullback. So the, the longer term vision is up with a short term pullback in the in the very short term. Newcastle coal up 1.8%. It's trying to put in a base here, give it some time. It usually takes a little bit of time. It contracts down, buyers equal to sellers. Candlesticks have closer opening and closing prices right in this general vicinity there. Ethereum up a little bit. But for the most part, just moving sideways, we're basing out. Same with uh, Bitcoin. Uh, I would say both of these look good to go higher uh, over time on the longer term viewpoint. But that's what we've got for today, guys. Uh, oil looks fantastic. I think it's going to go higher. Uh, natural gas is still bouncing around. Same with coal. It's probably it's it's got to work through some inventory. Put it that way. But oil looks strong. Um, the precious metals still look very good. Gold, silver, platinum. To move on up, copper's looking weak. So we're seeing weaker copper, which means the markets are weakening. We're seeing stronger precious metals prices, which means fear is in the market. And then we have this weird dynamic where the interest rates continue to go up, uh, which is supporting energy, which is uranium and oil. So we'll see how this plays out. Uh, it might be a little bit funky here towards the end of May. These interest rates could be going up because of the debt ceiling um, and people are getting worried about it. So that's that's kind of what could be happening. But we'll see. We'll see if what happens in May. We'll see what happens in June. Uh, if it is the debt ceiling and they figure out a solution, we should see those those yields turn back over. If they turn back over, then precious metals are game. They're they're back in in game game mode, game on mode. Um, but in the short term, they're feeling that pressure of the inverted yield curve and higher yields. That's all I've got for today. Thumb up for the content. Subscribe to the channel. And we'll catch you guys later. This is Finding Value.